Hi, I'm Chad with Turf Organics, and today we're going to go over sod webworms. How to identify and how to treat them. But I do have to remind you, I'm so close to 10,000 subscribers, and I appreciate the support. Don't forget, I'm doing a 10,000 subscriber giveaway, so three subscribers are going to win a bag of humic acid fertilizer um, straight for me. So please make sure to subscribe, because that giveaway is happening very soon. And also, our Turf Organics, we offer a lawn fertilization service, and we service the greater Jacksonville and St. Augustine area. So if you're in those areas, please feel free to give us a call, and I can come out and give you a free estimate. Now let's get right into the video. Now, sod webworms are caterpillars that can feed on your grass. Now, their main source and where you'll see them absolutely the most is in St. Augustine grass. They can also feed on Bahia, centipede, zoysia, and Bermuda grasses. They are most active spring through fall. So anytime from the spring, usually later spring for most people, all the way to fall, sod webworms are absolutely active. Now down in South Florida, anywhere probably from Orlando down, you can have sod webworms pretty much year round. But for the rest of us in the subtropical zones, that's areas of Florida, Texas, even like the Carolinas, Louisiana, and even parts of California, spring through fall is gonna be the times where we see them the most. Now the way sod webworms start is with moths that are light tan in color going throughout the yard. So when you walk through the yard that you'll see moths start to fly and flutter everywhere. These are the sod webworm moths. Now these moths don't do any damage but they lay eggs to the worms that will start chewing on your lawn. So having a sign of a lot of moths is a good sign that you are very likely to start having sod webworms chewing on the grass and it's the time that you should absolutely start addressing this issue but remember you can't treat the moss and the moss don't do damage they just are laying the eggs to the worms that do the damage the eggs hatch into larva caterpillar and those caterpillars are what's going to start chewing on the grass so what you're going to see is in bigger areas areas that look like they are scalped um, almost like a mower a weed eater scalp them not growing um, and very brown and as you get close to these areas, start to identify and look on the leaves. If the leaf blades are chewed up on, like you see here, then that's definitely signs of sod webworms. Because from afar, it just looks like brown and something's going on. But when you start to get close and really identifying, you'll notice that's just a bunch of chew marks all over the grass blade and that's a definite sign that you have sod webworm. Now the sod webworms are an inch to just under two inches in length so they're very small. They're green because of all the grass that they're eating. Now when you start to dig and look, the good news is you don't have to actually find the worm. If you see the chew marks like you see here on the grass blades, you 100% have, have army to sod webworms. Luckily, all the products that treat sod webworms also treat army worms so you can identify and treat those the same but if you want to dig deeper you can start to look for those worms that look like this the worms are hard to find mainly what you'll see is a lot of their poop which looks like this so if you're seeing a lot of poop a lot of chew marks you definitely have sod webworms or even army worms now you're definitely going to see the destruction before you ever see the pest because they're going to feed at night early morning late in the afternoon and at night they do not like the heat so they're going to spend their time during the day curled up deep under the grass into the thatch and even into the dirt because they're going to want to hide and stay away from the sun so you're not going to see these caterpillars before you see the damage the moss fluttering around and the damage is going to be your first sign of sod webworms damage so they have started to move very fast and they can actually do some pretty serious damage now luckily if you catch them early enough most areas can grow and recover because they don't damage the roots or anything like that they're just chewing on the foliage but what I tell people is sod webworms don't kill your grass they scalp your grass so low that the Sun kills your lawn so if you let the damage get really bad those areas are going to constantly being roasted by the Sun start to dry out and then damage will be done ideally you don't have to even resaw them doing a good layer of soil over and some fertilization after they're treated those areas can recover but if you catch them early Early enough a good treatment or prevention can get those areas to bounce back and recover with just in a few weeks so that's the really if there is good news about sod webworms that would be it but keeping your lawn generally 
thick and healthy can help. They ideally like shadier and wetter areas, but they can absolutely come out in full sun areas. So that's more of their ideal environment, but it doesn't absolutely mean that they won't come out in a full sun area. I see it all the time. So maybe controlling wet areas and things like that can help somewhat, but the main thing is just keep your lawn thick and healthy, and that'll be the best natural way to fight off the pests. Now, treatment for the pest. I'm gonna give you two products that I recommend. There's obviously a lot more products out there. These are just personal products I've used for a homeowner, easier to mix, very readily available, pretty affordable. So I'm kind of just going a middle, ineffective. So I'm kind of going a middle ground run. You don't absolutely have to use these two products I recommend. Active ingredients in them are very important and whatever product you do use, I recommend that those active ingredients are in there. But if you have a product that you've used successfully and you're happy with it, it's always good to rotate products. So keep that in mind. And I'm gonna tell you exactly how to mix them. So that's gonna be really, really helpful. And to be honest, sod webworms actually can be pretty tricky to treat because they hide so deep down during the day. And some of the systemic insecticides like a metacloprid, it's just not really effective against them. So they are actually a little bit tricky to treat. So the two products I recommend, I'm gonna recommend mixing and using both of them because that way they're gonna attack the pests in two different ways. And that way you're gonna get an effective kill off and it should, within one to two treatments, you should get full control of those sod webworms and even have a bit of prevention in there to stop any future sod webworms for the next few months. Now, these mixing, these two products and these mixing instructions are gonna be out of a hand sprayer or backpack. So when I'm recommending what to mix per gallon, just remember that this this only this formula only works when you're using a hand spreader or a backpack sprayer that's spraying one gallon per minute. Uh, most do, but if you want to check, you can get a bucket and spray it in there and time how long it takes to fill up one gallon. Now the first product I'm going to recommend is Permethrin SFR 36.8%. Now that's the name of the product and that's also the active ingredient. So this product's going to work very well for sod webworms. It's almost something I always recommend using in your mix somewhat when treating sod webworms and rotating some other active ingredients in there with it. You're going to mix this at a point four to 0.8 fluid ounces of product into one gallon of water. And then the other product is Bifin XTS. Now this is just bifithrin is the active ingredient and the XTS is a higher rate the percentage of bifithrin. Sometimes it's hard to get that contact onto them because they're so deep in the soil. So using a higher percentage can be effective. Mixing these products properly and using them responsibly is very, very important. So the mixing rate 0.07 to 0.15 fluid ounces to one gallon. Of water. Now I would recommend mixing those two products together. Obviously there's a range, there's a lower to high rate around the middle, especially mixing both products is probably where you're gonna wanna be at. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get control and be effective. Because if you, you use a lower percent that may not work well or only use one active ingredient, you might be treating three, four, and five times and constantly applying those products. Uh, each time you might get some wash off. So if you have to apply five times with a lower percentage or only one product, that's not much safer than using two effective products in one application. So that's why I'm recommending this, because it's gonna be better to apply one to two good efficient times get the control, that way you're being cost effective for yourself, you're controlling the issue and not causing yourself any cost in repairing your lawn. Now, if you have chickens or things like that, let your chickens roam around your yard and, and they'll have a feast on some sod webworms and you probably won't have an issue there. Uh, but I'm just going to safely assume most of you don't have chickens or if you do, you haven't told your HOA and I won't tell them, but this is the product I'm gonna recommend to use and to mix. It's always good to rotate products and, and learn more. But these are two good price effective, safe, and easy to use products. Now this was a video on how to treat and identify sod webworms. They're really big this time of year and you're gonna see them spring through fall in South Florida. You're gonna see them all the time. Sorry, that's what you, that's the price of living in paradise. Now, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them low in the comments. I will put links below for those two products that you can buy. You don't have to buy them, you can use more, but if you use my links, uh, it does support the channel. But I only want you to use those products if they're right for you and your 
you're comfortable with them. Don't feel forced to buy anything. That's just something I've personally used and I recommend and by using my links it does help support the channel. I have Amazon links to the to the backpacks and things that I recommend. These are good products that I do recommend and by using my link it helps support me as well to make some more of these videos. We're almost 10,000 subscribers. I'll be doing a giveaway so please feel free to subscribe. Everyone thank you so much for the support. I really appreciate it and have a great rest of your day.